Welcome to the second video in the measure theory reproduction list. Today we're gonna see the Vitali set. Now this set is very special and it will be of great importance later on when we learn about a special, a particular measure in our end called Lebesgue measure. It's very important, it's the one everyone uses. Now last video we finished saying that we were gonna generalize the idea of polyon. But we agreed that we need consistency. When we generalize this idea, we want that the things we know how to measure, the polyons we already know what their measure is, we need for them to still measure the same in the new generalized better way. We don't want any contradictions. So for this new definition to stay consistent with what we already know, we're gonna ask for it to have three things. Well, first of all, let me call this new generalized boolean a function. Let's call it mu. This is a Greek letter. It's very usual to use mu as measure. So mu is going to be a function that's defined for any subset E in the real numbers, right? We can apply mu to E. So, so essentially what we're saying is that mu is a function whose domain is going to be parts of, let's stay with R, and this will later be generalized with Rn and then with just any set x. So it just grabs a subset of R and it will give me a number. For now, let's say minus infinity infinity, but well, negatives is not something we're going to be working with because volumes as we know them are are positive so let me just say okay we're gonna work with the zero infinity and here i'm using closed because we know that any non-bounded set has an area or a volume of infinity so the measure of a set could actually give us infinity and we ask this function here to satisfy three properties the first one is, let's make a drawing. Well, if I have the real line and I have a few sets here, let's say that they are disjoint and let's call them E1, E2 or E3. Well, if I measure the union of these sets, I want the measure to be, I want the volume to be the sum of each. I don't want to miss any parts. So essentially what we're saying is that if we have a family of sets from i equals 1 to infinity, so a numerable sequence of sets, all of them in parts of R and disjoint. So disjoint for those who don't remember, it means that E of i intersection E of j is the empty set if i is different to j. So then what we want is for mu of the union of all the sets from i equals 1 to infinity of E of i, we want the measure of the union of all the sets to be exactly the sum of the measures of each of them. Okay, it's nothing crazy. If we cut a cube in pieces, we want the area of the entire cube to be the sum of the areas of the pieces. The second property we're going to ask is that if we have a set E that is congruent, I'll explain this in a minute, congruent to another set F, E and F, both sets in parts of R, so subsets of R, then we obviously want the measure of E to be equal to the measure of F. What this is, is let's say we are in R2, but this is for R, but the idea I think it's clearer when we are working here. So we have E, a square, 
this is E and then I have the exact same square but rotated and I call this at F well I want the areas to be the same thing I'm just rotating it and the same for any translation or reflections so that's the meaning of this notation this is congruent and last but not least the third property I want this function mu to satisfy is that if q is 0 1 let's open it in one of the extremes but it's the same then I want mu of q to measure 1 well it's pretty logical I want the unit interval to measure 1 well when we look for a function that satisfies these three properties we'll see we'll get a contradiction and that is Pitaliset. We will work with this later. We will see how we get the contradiction in the next video.